Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make elements for your slow stitching based on the theme St. Patrick's Day. We'll take the color, the different shapes, shamrocks, four-leaf clovers, gold coins, those type of things. Now one of the challenges with sewing for St. Patrick's Day, aside from printed fabric and the occasional four-leaf clover or shamrock button, is it's very hard to find little elements that you can add to your slow stitching. So I'm going to show you how you can make your own from just thread and a little design work, as well as taking some elements that were made for either decor, for a tablescape, or just for children to use in your slow stitching. Some of it requires modification, some of it's very minor, some of it's a little more in depth, but there's a lot that's out there that we can work with. So let's get started right away with all the different methods that I use. So here are some of the unconventional items that I purchased to use in my stitching for St. Patrick's Day. So there's the flag, again, not necessarily intended for sewing. These little plastic coins, they're supposed to look like the little coins in a leprechaun's um, barrel there. I think it's adorable and we can work with those and I'll show you how I do that. I particularly like this felt garland. Now it poses some problems because it's the way it's wrapped around each one. So we'll take that apart. So you have each one and I'll show you what I do with those. And then this little table scatter. These are fairly common. You can find them in a lot of places. I combine that with just some supplies intended for sewing. So for that, I go through my stash and I like to eliminate the magnitude of it. So I really zero down to the parts that I want. I look for green fabric, both scraps and larger pieces. Now some of the fabric I've cut into ribbons and some I've just used ribbon that I already have. Just cut a length of it. I have green buttons in various shapes. And then I did find these little shamrock shaped buttons, which I think are adorable, but they're not always plentiful or readily available. So I like to come up with different alternatives to using them. I have some green beads. Here's a fabric one that I made. And I'll include a link down below if you wanna make your own little fabric beads to use. I like to use felt. I have my quilted fabric for a backing. Lots of green embroidery floss. It doesn't really even matter the color. And then I like to use little lace scraps in my work. Now I might incorporate other colors of fabrics and whatnot, but this is pretty much what I use. I also have some beads, a little collection of beads, and depending on the shape, if they're teardrop, I can combine them to make a shamrock. So that's one method of using your existing stash to create an element. Now this is pretty big and the beads are pretty thick and stand tall. So it would have to be a large scope project for me to use this, but I like the way it came out and I save it and sometime I'll find that project for it. So let's get started making some of these St. Patrick Day elements, knowing that this is our supply of fabrics and notions to use. So after using the beading, I wanna take out that little felt garland, which is just a bunch of these four leaf clovers strung together. And I'll show you a little more in depth of it, but first I wanted to give you some examples of how I used it. So on a larger scale, I took this antique green doily and I just attached it to a backing. This is just some quilted fabric to give it a little body because the doily would fold on itself. I cut out one of the four leaf clovers and then I used the gold thread here as a couching stitch to hold it down. The gold and the green are very synonymous with the St. Patrick's Day theme. I added some gold stitching again with the couching stitch to hold this beautiful doily in place. And then I just went in there with a bunch of different color greens to hold it down. It's very simple and a large piece. And this will look beautiful on my table or just on my little counter just for the holiday. So now I have three others using the same garland here. So this is just one piece that I clipped. Let me show you how I do that. When you really study the garland, you see that it's intertwined. The way it's intertwined is it's a double layer of glue. So if you wanna preserve a particular color, let's say I wanna use this entire four leaf clover in this medium green, I would just very carefully snip on one edge of its neighbor and take it out and I could still use this piece. And then I would do the same thing over here. Now this is a very hard glue, so I haven't been able to cut through it. 
So I just cut another spot. And this way I have an intact little four leaf clover that I can use in my work, which is what I did here. And I just attached it just to some fabric with a little lace backing and a button. So that was pretty simple. And here I did the same thing. I took my little four leaf clover and I just did a little running stitch all the way around. I started here on the little stem and just followed it all the way around. And then I attached a button. I thought it was really cute. It gives a nice little focal point and I can use this in my work further. Now for the last one, I transformed one of these into a shamrock or a three leaf clover. So what you wanna do is take one of your pieces of four leaf clover and use it. Because these two are cut, I don't wanna use this because I only have really two intact hearts. If I was just to tack this down as a whole, I could go over it or make it work. But because I'm gonna cut it up, I need to take another four leaf clover where I can use three of the hearts intact. If I wanted to use this piece here, I would remove it from its neighbor and now I have three intact sides and one that I can't use or I could use but it would have that little um, separation here. I could probably get away with it but I'm going to show you a way to, you don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to take my clovers and cut them apart and I just follow the length of the stem as my guide and then the one that is imperfect that is with the cut I'm just going to set that aside so right now I have my components I have three hearts to make the three leaf clover and my stem so now I can figure out how I want to do this I can just place it together in what other, whatever format I want fitting it in and then I can always add a button to the center then after I stitch it down you'll never know that it was three separate pieces so that's how I make this felt garland very useful now I won't have all intact four leaf clovers but I have ways to hide that. So that's a fun technique. Now for my little element here that I would add to my slow stitching and maybe do a few more things with it, I took one of these plastic coins. They're really not metal, they look very appealing, but they're just little plastic coins. And then I just cut holes in them. You can cut as many as you want. I have this tool, it's kind of a heavy duty hole punch and it works really well. There are two sizes, of holes you can make a larger or a thinner and I just go in there and I'll punch as many holes as I want I just line up the hole where I want it squeeze and I have a little hole and I can do this as often and as many times as I want in my coin I created four holes because I know I wanted to stitch it down fairly securely to my little fabric collage and so I did that and as you can see on the back here, I just made four little stitches, carrying my stitches over, and then I continued to embellish it with stitches around the circle, just to emphasize that. So that's another way you can take something unintended for sewing and use it in your work. It's kind of a found object. So these pieces are basically fabric collage with a little more intention than just attaching it for the sake of attaching fabric as a collage background. For this one, I just took my scissors and cut a simple shape of a little leprechaun's hat. And then I used my gold thread and my black pearl to make the hat band. So I have a little charm here, a little fabric charm that I can use. Now for this one, I wanted to make something indicative of the Irish flag. I have the actual flag, but it's too big to use in my most of my work, and I didn't want to cut it up. So I just created a very abstract one using lace for the white panel, some green fabric, and then some orange fabric. So then I can just cut these down and have whatever shape I need. And I like the difference in texture that you have here from the lace to the solid 
to the printed fabric. So that's a very intriguing result. For this charm, I didn't use any supplies that were intended for sale for the purpose of St. Patrick's Day. I just took some ribbon with green in it, some lace, and then I stitched an appropriate word. I have my little quilted fabric, either my ribbon or the fabric strips, and I just fold them however I want them. It's kind of just a collage element. And then I would attach my lace, trimming this down as necessary, and then I can add whatever text I want. And again, I can make this any size I want. So it's very interesting and very personal to me. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Now for this charm, I just used some of this table scatter. Again, I used it as a found element. I just chose as many as I wanted to my piece of fabric that I wanted to use, and I would probably cut this down. And then I just stitched around it with a little couching stitch, made little X's here to hold that interesting shape in place. And that's the back of it. So you can take any object and attach it to your work. I particularly like these flat table scatters because they are flat and they don't add a lot of bulk and they're, they're very lightweight, which is also another lovely feature. So this was a fun way to incorporate St. Patrick's Day core in my slow stitching. Now this is a technique, again, for not using particular decor, just using whatever materials you have, thread and fabric. This happens to be a piece of wool felt. I sketched a little outline of a shamrock and then cut it out. So I kind of made my own little element here and I can use this in my work. I can attach it with stitching, add buttons, ribbon, anything that I want. So that's one method. Here I took the same thing, a little sketch that I made, and I just used a stem stitch all the way around to give me that little three leaf clover, that little shamrock. And that can be done on felt just as easily as it could be done on fabric with a little backing. You can see how tiny the stitches were. They're really very cute. And I enjoy that charm very much. Now the last technique is to use your fabric, make your sketch, and this is a very rough sketch of a three leaf clover. And then you wanna stitch it just using the little seed stitch. What I like to do is stitch the outline first, and because it's a seed stitch and that's what I wanna use it for, all my stitches are not gonna go in the same direction. I'm gonna start here, right on the little stem, and I'm kind of just putting stitches, skipping spots, making them go in different directions, all little stitches, just like this. I wanna keep them close enough together that they resemble a line, a stem of this little shamrock here. And then from here, I'll stitch my outline using that same formation. It's not gonna to appear to be a shamrock right away, but I'm trying to create my boundary and then I can fill it in with more seed stitches. So here I've completed the outline using all different seed stitches. And you can see that it's really intriguing and I can leave it like that, but I really like the way it looks filled in. So I'll just continue filling it in with teeny little stitches going in every direction, the little seed stitch here. And so when you're all done, you'll have something that looks like this. It's just the shape of the shamrock full of seed stitches. And it's quite interesting and beautiful. I hope you found something today that you can use from either your stash or just some easy to find supplies to make your St. Patrick's Day sewing a little bit different and unusual. So those are little elements that you can use in your slow stitching, particularly if you're going with a St. Patrick's Day theme. You can make it very elegant with just lace and a little touch of green and St. Patrick's Day garb and materials, or you can really have fun with it. Make it a little whimsical, shall we say. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.